Pastor Richard Gray here. Thank you for joining me as you listen to this 2020 Passover message. And just to come straight out with the title of the message, it's Stand Still. It's Passover. It's the Passover. And there's a reason why I'm sharing that. Last week, the last message that I shared was Be Still. And so the Lord just impressed on my heart to look and see there's a correlation between standing still, the word stand still and the Passover, and there is. And just a brief explanation of the Passover, the first time it's recorded in scripture is in Exodus chapter 12, where the Israelites were in bondage to Egypt for 430 years. And God came down with Moses through Moses. And you know the story of the 10 plagues, the prince of Egypt kind of explains it quite good in the sense and uh, uh, the Lord delivered them and uh, the final plague was the death of all the firstborn on animals and uh, the human beings in Egypt but for the angel of death to pass over the Israelites they had to take a lamb they had to slaughter the lamb they had to bry it as it were it was the first bry uh, a barbecue, as the Americans would say, in the history of mankind. Can you imagine three million people having a bra at the same time? My goodness, and can you imagine the smell that went over to, uh, <laughs> to Egypt and from the land of Goshen? Anyway, and then they had to take the blood and they had to put it on the lintels of the doorpost, the, the two sides and the top which was symbolic of the cross of Jesus. They didn't, weren't allowed to put the blood on the, on the floor because you don't trample the, under the, underfoot the blood of Jesus. And so when the angel of the Lord came and it was symbolic of Jesus, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7 that Christ is our Passover. Jesus, this was just symbolic of Jesus as the, the one and only sacrifice, eternal sacrifice, who was sacrificed for us at Calvary on the cross and his blood when applied to you when you accept him as your Lord and Savior the angel of death the angels of uh, sickness and disease and poverty pass over you when you apply the blood of Jesus so that was the first Passover and so uh, it's interesting to note and I think this is significant from the the day that they left Egypt to the day they crossed the sea was 25 days and you know God uses days as years and years as days and uh, so 25 is uh, the numeric equation of five times five five is the biblical number for grace and redemption and so uh, Paul writes to the uh, the, one of the churches and he says grace and peace be multiplied to you in the, in the knowledge of, of the Lord Jesus Christ so yeah was a perfect God's perfect grace for delivering them to them crossing over the Red Sea and we'll see why that number is significant as well just for you to say when God gave Abraham who's the father of the faith the promise that he would have a son Isaac also which is representative of the Lord Jesus Christ it took 25 years from him being 75 to a hundred years for that promise to be fulfilled and so there's grace here remember the Bible says Jesus came full of grace and truth so here we go in Exodus chapter 12 uh, verses 11 to 12 it says in this manner you shall eat it with your belt and we know in the New Testament that's symbolic of truth, the belt of truth. Fastened your say, uh, you eat it with your belt, fastened your sandals on your feet. Sandals speak of the gospel of peace. Uh, and your staff uh, in your hand, which is symbolic of the word of God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you shall eat it in haste. Uh, it is the Lord's Passover. It's not man-made. It's not angel-made. It's not demon-made, not government-made, not educational-made, not medical-made. It's God-made uh, for, for us to, to re receive the Passover. And we know in the New Testament, I'm going to have communion with you. If you look right here now, uh, I always do this with my family. I cut a piece of bread in the shape of a heart. 
because Jesus' heart, your heart speaks of your life, was broken. And uh, uh, so I'll talk more a little bit about this, this little emblem here. And so then in verse 12, he says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt, the world system, that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments, which means we have been delivered by every uh, satanic and worldly God that is on earth because of the shed blood of Jesus. And uh, so then we carry on here in Exodus 13. I thought I'd just read this for interest's sake because it's quite, quite significant. I think for a time like this as well, because we're in the midst of this uh, C19 virus epidemic and uh, you know I want to just encourage you Psalm 91 to the believer will deliver us from this a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand it will not come near you nor the arrow that flies at day and the pestilence that stalks come on we have to exercise faith now and this is what this message is for so while you're listening to this I want you to prepare a communion because I'm going to have communion with you you, you may stop the the video this time and prepare for communion uh, so that at the end I'm going to share communion the 2020 uh, Passover with you uh, as a, a, a pastor and a prophet and I want to declare some things over you for this next decade in fact God spoke to me and said to me 2020 is the decade of the resurrection now I don't know if that's going to culminate in what we call the rapture of the church you know, the dead in Christ will rise from uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Uh, you can go and read it there. And 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about that great and eventful day culminating in the, 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 uh, the, the, the Jesus' Jesus's return. Uh, anyway, I don't want to debate times and all that now, but it's, it's all there. So in Exodus 13, verses 18 to 19, this is quite significant. I want you to catch this as well was part of this whole scenario but God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea Red Sea redness is the color for Jesus's blood the color for redemption that's why we put red on our communion uh, you know juice uh, and the people of Israel went up out of the land equipped for battle interesting equipped for battle because what the Passover has done, uh, Jesus, our Passover, remember there was a great exchange that happened at Calvary. When Jesus died and, and he hung on the cross, and if you can see my two hands, and uh, oh, oh, gosh, yeah, no, I haven't got stuff to, to demonstrate. Oh, let me do that. Yeah, I've got some, uh, gosh, no, I'll, I'll do this like this. Imagine in my right hand is blessing, and in my left hand is the curse. And when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, it was though he took our curse. He who was right became wrong that we who were wrong could become right. That's basically what the scripture says. And then Jesus exchanged, he exchanged our death for his life. He exchanged our curse for his blessing. He exchanged our uh, death for his life. He exchanged our sickness for his health and well-being. He exchanged our, our poverty for his prosperity. So that's what happened. That's what Passover does. It's a setting free from sin, Satan, and the system of the world, and all their consequences, and all their, their actions, and all what they've done for you. It's a, it's a clean slate to start afresh. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, the Bible says he's a new creation. Behold, look, consider all things have passed away. All things have become new. And that's what the Lord wants to do in every life today. And so be equipped for battle. Be equipped for victory. Be equipped for conquest. Be equipped to be an overcomer and more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Because that's what the blood of Jesus has done for you and I. Then verse 19. Moses, by instruction of Joseph, 430 years back, took the bones of Joseph. Very significant. Bones in the scripture are symbolic of the word of God. 
Uh, the Bible says God's word is health to my navel or my flesh and marrow to my bones. Your bones are the blood, uh, the, the factory, uh, the blood factory for your blood. You, you, that's where blood is created in, in the marrow of your bones. So bones are symbolic of the word of God. The Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. And none of Jesus' bones were broken at Calvary. And so it's all symbolic that God's word um, symbolizes bones. So Joseph, his name means increaser. And uh, so what, what uh, jo Joseph prophetically saw is that when you carry my bones out, you're going to carry the word of God to a dynamic and, and uh, a phenomenal increase. Remember, that's what happened. Well, that's what was supposed to have happened. They were supposed to have gone. It's 11 days journey from Egypt to the promised land. I don't know how long God wanted them to be there for, but they were two years before God... Um, had enough of them and said for every day that you've been here which was 40 days at that time uh, you're going to live here those of you who uh, the men who were uh, under the age of 20 if I'm not mistaken or over the age of 20 they all died in the wilderness in the next 40 years because of their unbelief and only Joshua and Caleb uh, were the two that uh, went into the promised land and the children of those guys who could have uh, brought their children into the promised land. And so what God is saying, that he's taking us out of Egypt, that's what the Passover does, into our promised land. Come on, into your destiny. It's, it's very simple. You just, that's why the Bible says, follow Jesus. Just follow the Lord and, and, and he will bring you into green pastures. Go back and read Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd. Come on. He, he, I will not lack. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Green is the biblical color uh, for prosperity, life and abundance. And so that's what the Lord Jesus said. I will cause you to lie down in green pastures by still waters. The promise still remains today for us. And they took it with him for Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear anyway. Now, uh, Exodus 14 is when God also, uh, uh, and, and, well, let me read it. You can read verses 1 to 14, but I'm going to just read verses 10 to 14 and then explain some words. And I want you to catch some of the, the truth that God has for you applied to your life by faith. Remember, the Bible says that the word of God never promised uh, Israel uh, that generation in the wilderness because they never mixed it with faith. You've got to take the word of God and you've got to mix it with faith. And then the, 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 the uh, chemistry of, of our faith in the word of God, man, will bring you into what God has promised. There has not failed one good word of all that he's promised. Oh my goodness, this excites me. See, God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will never fail you. I will never leave you in any area of your life. So every area of our lives, that's where God is. But we have to apply it by faith. We have to have a believing heart. You can't be negative. You can't doubt. Man, uh, do you know, when you look at the, the original word for doubt in the scriptures, it actually means blasphemy. Go and study it. In the New Testament especially, when you doubt, it's a spirit of blasphemy. And in Hebrews, the Bible calls an unbelieving heart wickedness. Hey, you don't want to be had up for wickedness, you know. Don't commit the crime of, of unbelief. Uh, anyway, let's go for it. So verse 10, when Pharaoh drew near, this is after they'd come out of Egypt now. And they were, they, they'd left and now this scenario is taking place. When Pharaoh drew near, they were at the border of the Red Sea there, on the shores. The people of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt? These are the negative dudes, man. That you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? I mean, that didn't stop the plan of God, by the way. God still carried it through in their children and their grandchildren. Verse 12, is this not what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. See, that's a spirit of unbelief. 
Hey, don't, 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 don't let, let that catch you. Don't, don't let that contaminate you. Be careful who you hang around with. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. You don't want to, you know, to be contaminated with unbelief. Verse 13. And Moses said to the people, and this is the two scriptures, my goodness, Lord, that I want to give to you today. And uh, on, on Good Friday, so I want to wish you a good Friday today. <laughs> 2020, good Friday today. Uh, gosh, what will the date be? Lord, it's a, a good Friday. Oh gosh, I just forget the date that it is today. Uh, one second, one second. I need to just clarify the date on Good Friday. It's the 12th. It's the 12th today. 12 is the biblical numeric for government. It's the 12th day of the fourth month, 2020. Prophetically, when you look at that, uh, 12 is the number for government. Joseph, uh, after Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, and then Joseph, uh, he was the father, if I'm not mistaken, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then, uh, which means increase, uh, four is the number for creation. Behold, I do a new thing. And we know that 2020 is the word where God speaks. It's uh, a lot of people say 2020 vision, you know, you can use that. But when you look at the Hebrew calendar, it's the word uh, 80 as well. And uh, there's a lot of prophetic symbolism there. Anyway, I'm getting carried away again. So verse 13, Moses said to the people, fear not. So I want to say to you in the midst of this coronavirus and whatever might come our way, in the name of Jesus, fear not. Wow. Stand still. Here we go. This is 25 days after Passover. God's going to keep his promise. What God promised in Psalm 91 and all the other Psalms and scriptures about our protection and our preservation and our prosperity and our, our abundance. He'll not leave us nor for, fail us nor forsake us. He, he's a God keeping word. He's a covenant keeping God. He, God is a God of covenant and he can only work by covenant, which is his word. That's why I've got the Bible right here. So you can be uh, conscious of as I'm preaching, you can see the Bible there. It's the written word. It's the promise. This is the book of miracles. This is a covenant book. This is the manual for life. Stand still. Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. Take this by faith. For the Egyptians whom you see today, the coronavirus who you see today, <sighs> you will never see again. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and you, will, you have only to be silent. In other words, be quiet. Don't let things come out of your mouth that shouldn't come out of your mouth. Now study some of these key words and I want to just marinate some of these words into you fear not stand still it's the passover fear not the word not is not in the original it's actually the word fear still but they, i don't know why they put fear not it's actually the word fear it's an instruction to fear but some of the meanings in here means to be in reverent respect and honor for what God's doing. Be astonished to inspire reverence or godly fear. Sorry, one second. Just got to do that. Got messages coming on my phone and it's blocking out the camera. So I don't know if you can see me there. So that's what it means there. Then st uh, stand is not there. The word still is there. So fear still, which means be placed and established. Be stationed, stand fast, present yourself. That's what God's saying. Don't back off now. Don't be a backslider. We walk by faith and not by sight. Walk is a forward momentum. To doubt is to backslide. Then the word salvation, yeah, there's a lot of meanings to it. But just to remind you, again, I'm, I'm a reminding preacher sometimes. It means to be saved, delivered, to have aid, to have victory, prosperity, deliverance, help. Some, uh, it means to be helped. It means to uh, have saving health. This is all what God is doing for us in the Passover and beyond and more and every day. 
uh, wealthy, the, uh, total salvation. Uh, the, the, the New Testament salvation is the word sozo, comes in five, five uh, package deals, if I can say, basically, uh, uh, no particular order, but salvation from uh, uh, sin, deliverance from demons, healing of your body, soundness of mind, and material uh, well-being. That's the package deal. And there's more because Jesus is the unspeakable gift. We have to keep unwrapping him. And so it means your welfare, your well-being, your prosperity, uh, and your victory. That's what the word salvation means. It's a total package of total conquest. And then the word Lordja is the word for God, for Jehovah, which means the eternal self-existing one. Think about that. You know, we, we human beings are so macho. I look at these muscle men and these these rich people and and uh, well not rich uh, arrogant people let's call it pride whether you're rich or poor let me say that again uh, talented beautiful looking people who who have their identity in those things of them just let them go without food for a couple of days and see how much they are see how vain they are see how beautiful they stay we need to exist on external substances that are in the earth. We are not self-existing. Yah is God who is the eternal self-existing one. And I love the two scriptures in, in Isaiah. One's in Isaiah. I forget who the other one is. They're probably both in Isaiah. But it says, uh, God says, I am He uh, from eternity to eternity. And then there's another scripture. Thus is the high lofty one. I think this is Isaiah 57 somewhere. Uh, this is the high lofty one who inhabits eternity. The only way my puny brain in, in comparison to God can explain that is where space ends, God begins. You work that out mathematically, I don't know. So, uh, so God says, yeah, stand still. So he said to them, when the Egyptians were coming and uh, he said, stand still and see the salvation of God. I feel to say to you today, last message I spoke a week ago uh, almost I said be still be still and go and, you got to go and look at that message it, it, this is like like a part two kind of a thing and now God's saying stand still stand still be placed be established first in your heart be established in the written word which are the divine promises of God that will never fail you never forsake you and never let you down God said, my covenant will I not break nor alter that which has gone out of my mouth. Psalm 89, 34, I think. And, and so shall my Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall accomplish where I've sent it to. It shall prosper in what I please. It will not return to me void or empty. Or the Hebrew word means unfurnished. God's word brings divine, supernatural, and physical, and material, mental, any furniture you need for your life, God's word will bring it to you. It will not return to him unfurnished. God's word always manifests in, in, the, in what he says. And then just for interest's sake, here's another interesting scenario. Israel's Passover this, in the second year of their exodus. I believe, and I want to read it to you and, and, and just say this again, uh, in the second year is symbolic of the second day of the church age which we're in now. Because I'm going to read what, what happened there as well. Uh, we're, now, the church has somewhat been contaminated with the spirits of death. It's the spirit of death out there. The world is dead. They separated from God. That's what the word death really means, separation. If you, if you study the scriptures, death means separation. If you're dead uh, to sins, you're separated from sinning. If you're dead to self, you're separated from selfishness. If, if you, you're going to be dead to the world. Paul talks about that. That's what in Christ Jesus, we become dead to those things. We're crucified with Christ. But when, you, uh, when you're alive in your sin, you're dead to God, separated from God, separated from love, separated from life, separated from blessing, separated from fellowship. We've been reconciled with God. So we need to, this is what happened. And uh, in Numbers 9, if I'm not mistaken, they had an issue where one of the, 
or one of the guys had contaminated himself with a dead body. And, and, and uh, the people were trying to refuse him from uh, having communion or the Passover, from having the Passover. And the Lord said, no, he can still have the Passover. So right now there might be a stage in your life where you are death contaminated. <laughs> You've been contaminated with a spirit of death. How does death come in many forms? Depression, uh, delusions, um, discouragement, uh, sickness, disease, uh, inadequacies, feelings of rejection, all those kind of things. God says, come and take off the Passover. Give your life to Christ. Apply the blood to your heart. Be born again. Be saved. Let your sins be forgiven today. Come and return to the author and the finisher of your faith, the author and bishop, the overseer of your life today. So Numbers 8, 9 verse 8, Moses, because of this scenario, Moses goes and inquires of the Lord. Look, look how he says it. He says, uh, and Moses said to them, stand still. <laughs> it's interesting. In a time of crisis, don't run here, then, everywhere. Uh, what I'm seeing out of this as well is this. You stand still and you inquire of the Lord. That's what David did. Remember when his children and wives were kidnapped and all the... Uh, by that one group, I just forget right now, and David went to inquire of the Lord, which means he stood still, he, he stationed himself. He has a scripture that I love very much. In 1 uh, Kings 17 verse 1, Elijah appears to Ahab, who's a bad dude, who's Jezebel's husband. He was actually her uncle, if I'm not mistaken. And Elijah appears to him. Everyone's running away from Ahab because of them, they, you know, killing the prophets and that and whatever they're doing. And he, he makes a, 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 an announcement. He pronounces something to Ahab. He says, as the Lord God lives before whom I stand, at my word there won't be rain or dew until I say again. So two things there. As the Lord God lives, as sure as God is alive, who I stand before. Now watch this. If you can stand in the presence of God, like Jesus, I'll show you another scenario of Jesus. When you can stand in God's presence and come out alive, <laughs> come out, you know, safe, then you have the ability because when you stand in God's presence, listen to me, you get full. Right now I'm standing in the presence of light. And, and whatever energy is in the light, it's coming into my being. And when you stand in the presence of God, you're filled with His presence, His glory and His anointing. Then you can stand before devils and you can stand before the ungodly. And that's what happened with Jesus. The Bible says that in, in Mark 1 verse 12, the Spirit of God drove Jesus into the wilderness. That's exactly the same word for Jesus driving out demons, or casting out demons, or being thrust out into the wilderness. And when Jesus uh, submitted to the driving of the Holy Spirit, he got filled in those 40 days of uh, prayer and fasting. He came back in the presence of God, with, with the presence of God. And then with the same uh, power that drove him into the wilderness, he, he, he drove demons out. It's like that, you know, those metal things when you, uh, with the balls on, with the pieces of string, you let one go and it hits the others. For every action, equal and opposite reaction, Newton's first law, I think. <laughs> but Jesus came and with that power that drove him, he was able to drive out demons. And then later on, he drove out the money changers as well. Stand still that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And then the Lord said, no, they can have the Passover. Permission for the mission granted. <laughs> so today I'm telling you now, repent. Come to the Passover, the table of the Lord. Come to the Lord. Permission granted for the mission. For your information, in Numbers 9, verse 22, and I don't know if I'm speaking prophetically, because today... This Passover also for Israel, the Jews, is the first time since the first Passover in Exodus 12 that they are indoors taking the Passover. 
that could be very significant, very prophetic at such a time as this. It's a very divine decade, this. Listen to me. I want to say it again. I believe it's the decade of the resurrection of the dead. It's a resurrection decade. Things are going to come alive in the church. Things are going to be restored. Giftings are going to be restored. Ministries are going to be restored. Miracles that we saw walking on water, parting seas if necessary, multiplying bread, raising the dead. Every miracle that was in the scripture and even more that's never been seen before is going to come forth in this decade. It's going to be probably necessary. So in Numbers 9 verse 22 and 1 Samuel uh, no, no, Numbers 9, yeah, Numbers 9, verse 22, where the, oh, yeah, this, sorry, this is just another in, thing that I want to throw in here. Gosh, I'm getting so excited, I'm jumping the gun a bit yeah. <laughs> This is also important, by the way, for every believer right now, because I was thinking as I was preparing this message, wow, how many believers rely on the pastor? You know, Pastor Llewellyn Roberts say this very humorously. Uh, you know, sometimes people say, Pastor, Pastor, I need a plaster. I need a disaster. You know, uh, come quickly kind of thing, you know. And uh, so we need to, uh, there's a lot of Christians are wondering now, because we know, we're noticing worldwide that some churches are seeing a drop in the finances of their tithes and offerings. And now, that could be out of fear. It could be out of negligence. It could be out of lack of discipline. So I'm thinking there's quite a dynamic that when people are together, they are stronger. The Bible says one will chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. It says there's a multiplication of potential when people are together. If two of you agree on earth as touching anything, shall be done. There's something about togetherness. And I believe the devil and this thing is trying to split the church, separate us. But now's the time. What all you've received, you need to stand firm in it. Paul said it. Stand in what I've taught you. Be grounded. Be movable. Steadfast. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Not just when you come to church on a Sunday or something. So I wonder, this is a challenge to you out there. Are you still praying? Are you still taking communion? Are you still reading the, the scriptures? Are you still testifying? Are you still serving the Lord? In faith and confidence and boldness and in love of the word of God. So whether it was two days, I just thought I'd throw this in. I said that to say this. Yeah, this is just for your information scripture. Whether it was, this is Numbers 9.22. Uh, whether it was two days, a month, or a year that the cloud remained above the tabernacle, look at that, the children of Israel would remain in camp and not journey. But when it was taken up, they would journey. This is symbolic of the Holy Spirit in us. Cloud by day uh, and fire by night. His presence. It actually speaks of His presence. So individually, everybody could see. They didn't even need Moses to tell them. Moses was leading them behind the cloud. The cloud went first. And when they saw the cloud, they all knew, let's move. So let's have a global witness of the Holy Spirit's leading. And there is a scripture in Isaiah that, I think it's Isaiah 52 somewhere, it says we'll see eye to eye. Let's have prophetic global unity here. And then Samuel's address I just thought I'd throw these scriptures in as well for standing still. His final address to Israel before his departure, he says something interesting as well. And I want to throw this in because it's positive, it's not negative. All these standstills are positive, have you noticed? It's a stand still to go forward. It's not backing off. It's a stand still to go forward. Whew! Top up! <laughs> Lord Jesus. Be a Cremora Christian, not inside, on top. <laughs> on top. 1 Samuel 12 verse 7, Now therefore stand still, that I may plead with you before the Lord concerning the, all the righteous deeds the Lord of the Lord that he performed for you and for your fathers. 
And then in verse 16, he says, Now therefore stand still and see this great thing the Lord will do before your eyes. I prophesy to you now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, church of the living Christ. Stand still and watch the deliverance of the Lord in the church. Watch miracles. We will not go down or under for going over. We will not sink financially. If God is to bring angels, listen to me, to bring food to you, he'll do it. He's not subject to the world's economic system. If they close transport, you know what's going to start happening? Supernatural transportation in the spirit. That's what's going to happen. It's, it's, it's probably a setting up for these miracles that have to take place. Walking on water. Oh, you come and you're suddenly preaching in, in another country. Where's your vaccination or something? You know that thing that's going on with Bill Gates and all that? They're saying something, whether it's going to happen now or not. I don't know, but they're saying that it could be a time when you have this uh, implant and you're not allowed to travel if you don't have it. You know, that people are saying that kind of thing. Now, imagine if it does come to pass and you can't travel. Supernatural transportation. Supernatural provision. If that means that's the mark of the beast, we're not to take it. Whew. Let me read it again. 1 Samuel 12 verse 16. Now therefore stand still and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Job 37 verse 14. God saying to him, listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Do you know that scripture in Revelation that says we are becoming by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony? A lot of people think a testimony is this. Oh, I was so bad. I got saved and now this is what God's doing for me. No, our testimony is based on what Christ did for us. This is the word of our testimony. This is the word of our covenant. And you're overcome by the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony and loving not your own life to the degree if you have to even die physically, but you should be dying daily to self. And we'll see the wonderful works of God. In Isaiah 30 verse 15, I just thought I'd read this from the Amplified Bible. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. And in quietness and trusting confidence shall be your strength. I want to encourage you with that scripture at this time. Return to God. Return to Him in faith. If you've been doubting, if you've been fearful, drop the fear like a hot cake. In fact, I love what the scripture says in 1 John 4, 18 and somewhere around there. It says, perfect love casts out all fear. That word perfect there means mature love. What is love? Jesus said, if any man love me, John 14, 15, he'll keep my commandments. Keep the commandments. And the love of God will be in you. And God cannot forsake his own love. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the hope of who God is. So as I said before, the, this Passover today that's happening right now, this weekend, is the second Passover in the history of the Jews where they had to stay indoors. It's prophetically significant that right now this is what's happening with this virus. So this is a scripture that there could be something cooking in the spirit. Well, there is always. God's in control. Let me just tell you, if you, you know, I always go back to Revelation 17 verse 17. To just always comfort myself, God's in control. Let me just say this, by the way. A lot of people are, are, are quoting the book of Revelation, Daniel, Ezekiel, end time prophecy. But the book of Revelation, twice if I'm not mistaken, in the very first verse, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of the Antichrist, not the revelation of the angels, the trumpets, the seals, the vows, the plagues, the trumpets, uh, and, 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 and the beast and the false prophet and the whore. No, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is like the sun. They are all orbiting around him. They are fixed to what he wants to be done. And in Revelation 17 verse 17, the three greatest 
ogres, the, the unholy trinity of the earth. God says he puts it into their heart to do what he wants to fulfill his prophecy. <laughs> They've got a hook in their mouths. So what's happening today is God putting them, he's leading them. Don't be scared. Might be a Goliath to you, but be a David. Rise up David and Deborah. In, in, I'm speaking prophetically. Rise up, if you're a man, rise up with the spirit of David. If you're a woman, rise up with the spirit of Deborah. In the name and by the blood of Jesus. So I, I want to read this here. It's the same, uh, same incident, but the, the first report is taken from 2 Kings 23 verse 22 which says, uh, this is Josiah, I think he started reigning when he was 8 years old or 12, and it says, For no such Passover had been kept since the days of the judges who judged Israel, or during all the days of the kings of Israel or the kings of Judah. This is Josiah, he had such a Passover that they'd never had it before. Then in Second Chronicles 35 verse 18, the same incident is recorded, but it just says it a little bit different. It says, no Passover, Passover like it had been kept in Israel since the days of Samuel the prophet. None of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as was kept by Josiah. That's right. And the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel who were present and the inhabitants of Israel. This is a significant Passover today. Listen to me. So we who are Christ's blood bought, blood washed, blood covered, blood redeemed must also by faith apply and plead the blood of Jesus for our divine immunity and protection from this spirit of death leached upon the earth right now. So let me first make a challenge. If you're not a Christian and you're watching this, now's the time to give your life to Christ. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ in your Savior, now's the time to do it. All you have to do is just say yes to Jesus, yes to the truth, yes to the Bible. Just go and read John chapter 3, explains it, and just say yes to that. If you're backslidden, return to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, the shepherd and guardian of your life, your overseer. If your life is cold right now, all you have to do is just repent and say, Lord, forgive me, and God will reinstate you. He said he's married to the backslider, covenanted to you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He never left you, you might have left him. Remember the story of the prodigal son. <clears throat> he's always stayed fixed. The, you as a prodigal need to come back to the father. And guess what? He accepts you. There's another scripture. I think, I think it's John 6, 37 or 47. It says, Jesus is speaking. He says, for no reason will I, will I reject you. I'll receive you. The unpardonable sin is when somebody outright rejects Jesus and says, I never ever want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ ever in my life. That's the unpardonable sin. Not adultery and all these other sins. It's not the unforgivable sin. You can be forgiven, but don't carry on doing it.
So, Father, I pray, first of all, for those that need you as their Lord and Savior need to return to you. Plead the blood of Jesus over them. Bind devils of uh, infirmity and unclean spirits and spirits of bondage, drug addiction, sorcery, witchcraft that's binding them. I break your power over them in the name and by the blood of Jesus. I set you free in Jesus' name and by his word and his power and his spirit and his blood. I thank you for their salvation. Thank you that now they can have access to communion. Now Jesus said, and I want you to have communion with me, with your families. Jesus said, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. What does that mean? Well, one of the meanings of the word remembrance is a token and a souvenir. And just for interest's sake, this what you see here. Let's put that there. I don't know how, how close you can read that, but I got this as a souvenir from the Trinity Broadcasting Network many years ago, and it's got their emblem on there, and it's got things for, for you know, cups and, uh, and, and wafers, but I always have done this for years with my family. I've always taken a piece of bread and cut it into a heart, and then... Uh, Jesus said, as often as you do this, you remember me. You remember the Lord's death. But what happened? Jesus' body was broken. Broken. He bled seven times. For our... Let me break this into seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me break this into seven pieces prophetically. Jesus bled seven times. Maybe eight, if I'm not mistaken. Perfect shedding of his blood. And every place where he was shed is symbolic of an area in our life. He bled on his head first, sweat drops of blood. That's symbolic of the curse. When you work with the sweat of your brow, sweat is symbolic of the curse. He became a curse. Then crown of thorns on his head for your emotions and your mind he was pierced for our iniquities bruised the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed he was wounded for your transgressions bruised for your iniquities thorns on his head and then stripes on his back you know Jesus had so many stripes 39 times 9 tails of leather with bone and glass and lead and they wrapped around him and even cut him and gouged open his, his chest and stomach area as well. And he shed more there than any other place in his body and people need healing more than anything. So you can apply the shed blood of the stripes of Jesus for your healing today. Then he was nailed in his, I don't know which came first, but either way he was nailed in his, and his feet. Feet symbolic of your ways. He, he, our wayward ways, our, our off the track ways. He, he took the nails, he bled there so that our ways could be certain. God's word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Then he was nailed in his hands for your work, for your prosperity. So that you and I could, you know, be whatever you put your hands to, the Bible says, will prosper. And then they pierced his side, and water and blood came out, which, which uh, doctors say that's grief. He was pierced in his heart for your salvation. <laughs> he finalized our salvation by being pierced. He shed his blood from his own heart 
to your heart. Oh my goodness. People who don't receive Jesus Christ, I don't understand. They are in rebellion to love. They are in rebellion to peace. They are arrogant to life itself. The author of life. That's why Jesus said, Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus' body was broken. His blood was shed. And so this is a souvenir from that will remind me of the Trinity Broadcasting Network in uh, California. I think it was, it was Florida that I went to. In Florida. But they did a reenactment of Jesus dying on the cross. Quite profound. Quite profound. I was better than going to Disney. I just wept as I followed the actors. <laughs> Anyway, and so this is a souvenir of TBN. It reminds me of what took place there and what I experienced. So when we take of the actual emblems, this is a reminder of Calvary. And when we are applied by faith, all the forces of Calvary, God brings to pass to manifest and come to pass in our lives. Healing, sickness, salvation, anything you, you, you need, it's it's the cross. As Jesus Christ at Calvary on the cross did it for us all. Let me pray. Father, as we come to these emblems on this 12th <clears throat> of April 2020, this divine Passover, I believe, is a, a, a very interesting Passover. Who knows what will become of this Passover, what will be launched. And Father, as a, as a prophet, I feel right now to launch another move of God, another dimension, another thrust. I call it down from the throne of grace upon the body of Christ today. I call forth dreams and visions. I call forth words. I call forth perception and understanding. Father, I call forth an, an open heaven over the fivefold ministers of God in the name and by the blood of Jesus to see and perceive so that we will have global unity, that there'll be no competition between prophets and apostles who can give the best word, who can give this word and just, just Lord, say things unnecessary, but to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Then give us the word to the body of Christ that we might overcome with these words, Father. Yet it's all in your word. I pray for my neighbor out there, Father. I bless them with this covenant meal, the Lord's table, the table of salvation, the table of life, the table of deliverance, the table of peace, the table of love, Woo! the table of life. This is what it is. The Lord's table. It's not man's table. It's the Lord's table. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered in the name and by the blood of Jesus over me and you and our household, over our city, Maritzburg, KwaZulu Natal, South Africa, Africa, and the rest of the world where this message is coming from right now in Jesus' name and by his precious blood that we've been redeemed from eternity. Thank you, Father. So I receive the peace token of the Lord's blood. Oh, Lord, I remember your death. Thank you for, for what you did for us at Calvary. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming, dying for our sins, making us a child of God, giving us eternal life, blessing us here on earth with such a divine covenant. We have a better covenant based on better promises. Lord, I receive for me and my household, our church, Lord, and all who are connected with me, Father, in this message, may they receive by faith these words, apply them, and receive miracles, Lord, of what Calvary represents to us, even what I haven't said, Lord. Thank you for this. You were broken in every area of your life, symbolically. You went to hell. You took the, you, you, as it were, became unsaved, Jesus, and then you took the keys of death and hell. You got born again, you preached the gospel to the Old Testament saints, and then you led captivity captive, and you rose triumph, triumphal over death, hell and the grave. 
And now you have begotten many sons after you, Jesus. We thank you for that, Lord. Let's receive his body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you glory. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. Follows us all the days of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for shedding your blood for us, Lord. The eternal blood of Calvary at the cross. You are the once and for all Passover sacrifice, and now death has to pass over us. Sickness and sin has to pass us by. System of the world has to pass us by. Demons, we are the light of the world. We expel the darkness by your shed blood. God bless you. Trust you are blessed by this word. See you again next time. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Center Peter Marisburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows. During our summer months, we meet from October until the end of April at 8 a.m. in the morning. During our winter months, from May till the end of September, we meet at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. As I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood, I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, Thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray. And God bless you and do have a God-filled life with Jesus Christ.